I found the coolest heat gun ever. What's that? This is a heat gun. I know, I know, I recognize it. I'm melting! Oh! oh. Yeah, you don't. You know, so when Roger and I had to go to Fry's because I'm either come home with nothing or everything that I've ever wanted except for what we actually had on the list. But uh, Tektron's heat gun, it's awesome. I finally have a heat gun mm -hmm. to melt shrink wrap that'll actually fit in my small toolbox instead of the giant. I'm not going to have to like crawl around. I'm rewiring my truck. I remember one time when, my, um, when a pair of my headphones, I think my ultimate ears broke, we tried to go into the, uh, the, 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 uh, the lab and, and actually <laughs> shrink wrap the wire back onto it because we had it was loose. And we're like, oh, if we just get really a really small like, little shrink guy, shrinky tube, what do you call them? What shrink are they wrap. actually called? Shrink wrap. And then we put it on the thing and it didn't, then it wouldn't bend. Yeah. And then it didn't really work. It well, it was also enough. like, it was, it, yeah, they're like freaking 22 gauge wire. And if you had yeah. If it was small enough to actually shrink over the wire, it was too big, to, too small, big enough to. It was a nightmare. I love, I love, I love stuff like this though. It's like science in action. <laughs> it, it's like you know when you have those little pellets that you add water yeah. to and they go whoomp and or they grow really fast, or those little, those little things that you shrink in the oven. Shrinky you draw shrinky dinks. It's like that. It's like that. Yeah, I finally decided. I was just amazed because I wasn't looking forward to dragging my 300 watt heat gun around the inside of my truck while I'm wiring it. Oh. My truck's gonna be unhinged. Yeah. It's gonna be wild. In a good way, right? Oh, wait, no, it's wrong. Like way. not literally unhinged, because that sounds dangerous. No, no I, I, I have that to run like. Sounds like what you don't want your truck to. Be. I have to be able to support 100 watts, or excuse me, like like 70 amps for the amplifiers alone. Mm -hmm. Plus, there's a second 70 amp line going to the back of the truck. Hmm. For like welders and mayhem and blenders. Fantastic. So how much does this little guy throw you bucks. back? Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Did you tell me that already? Possibly. Oh. But it fits inside of it. I'm just excited that I finally like found a heat gun I can put in my small tool kit. Fantastic. I well, thought I'd share it with all of you. <laughs> along with his twee little heat tool, I see Mr. Norton has a whole pile of tools loaded back here today. Yes. There's barely enough room to stand. What's this stuff? Okay. So, and I promise. Is that I will, a radar gun? That is a radar gun. You can buy a radar gun for, okay, look, I'm gonna talk about the radar gun last. Okay. This is, this is actually in honor of my obsession. Uh, Adam Savage of Mythbusters, mm -hmm. every so often he tweets out, he shows, he has this Pelican case with all of his measuring tools in it. It's insane, he just like built a brand new one, and he has every single measuring tool he owns is in one single Pelican case so he can travel with it. It's completely unhinged. And it's also, uh, it's just, you probably just saw a picture of a flash by on your screen. It's amazing, it's the nicest tools in there. And in honor of Roger and I going on a tech binge at Fry's, our local computer parts, electronic parts, tools, soldering iron, Blu-ray, CD-ROM, weird snack food, appliance <laughs> store. Fry's is a regional thing. I think they're finally down in like Texas and Vegas, but they're mostly a California thing. Yeah, it's pretty much designed to separate the geeks from the rest of their money. It is, un yeah, it's, it's like, like Vegas, you think Vegas is the ultimate money filter until you see a geek in, uh, in Fry's. I've only been to a Fry's once since really? I've lived out here. It's completely unhinged. Because there's nothing worse than finding yourself going home on a Sunday afternoon with like a power supply mm -hmm. and an EEPROM programmer because you never know when you're going to need an EEPROM programmer. And but like, it's kind of like going to Ikea. You go to Ikea, you come back with like Swedish meatballs and like a, a, a look, shoe Look, I've got a new iron. silverware holder. Yeah. <laughs> what was wrong with the old and one? And like baby toys. Yeah. It's like, well, what? Don't, don't mock the baby toys there. because they were, No, they're pretty good. They, that's like, well, you can buy like a thousand of those balls we're for like a hundred bucks. We? It's completely unhinged. Geek Anyhow, tools. we've got some geek tools for measuring that aren't as pricey as they used to be. I'm going to skip the classic volt on meter or multimeter or multi-tester. This is like the critical geek tool used for measuring DC and AC voltage, amperage, and resistance. I'm just going to say that my Fluke worth every penny because it can hold over peak voltages when I'm testing sensors because the, the sensors actually switch back from their, their lowest voltage to their highest voltage a few times every second, sometimes hundreds, and they'll actually hold the peak and lowest voltage, and it makes sorting out ODB2 engine errors like so amazingly easy. I, and someday I'm going to find it because it's in my garage. There's been a collapse in the garage. I don't want to talk about it. Um, I'll also mention that for basic volt, amp, and all measurements, it is amazing how accurate like a $10 or $20 digital multimeter can be. Um, the cheap ones from like insert name of like Harbor Weasel Tool and Dog Show. It's just, it, yeah. That's going to be the name of my new band. Harbor, Harbor Weasel. Weasel. Tool and dog show. Forget about the gun and doll show. We've got the Harbor doll Weasel. Show, not oh dog show. Oh my goodness. Well, I think I did say dog, but there's a gun and doll show band in San Francisco. Um, this is a $50 Radio Shack digital display sound level meter. It is useless for measuring under 50 dB, from, but from about 50 dB to 120 plus, it is pretty fantastic. I mean, 
Lower, it's amazing, like, measuring low-level dB, like anything under 50 dB or so, you really need either an anorganic chamber or a super quiet room without you inside of it to test very low noise levels, especially when you're trying to use silent PCs. One of the biggest nightmares I ever had was trying to measure a silent PC. So it's ANC level weighting, it's great for setting up home theater gear or measuring the noise levels in your truck mm, before mm -hmm. you insulate it. Okay. I was, was going to ask the why question. Now I know. Now you know. <laughs> yeah, actually, I recently got to hang out with a couple of Hollywood sound engineering types, and they both pointed out that everybody they know in the industry has one of those in their bag that they actually use. And like the multi thousand dollar, like it can measure, you know, the sound of a butterfly flapping its wings uh, sound level meter is usually like in a crate in a safe somewhere. Hmm. So I was excited. They use a $50 tool just like me. Um, infrared thermometers or non-contact temperature gauges um, used to be stupid expensive. Now they're 40 bucks online and it's uh, even less in some cheap tool stores. Um, as near as I can tell, this $60 Microtemp MT Pro has almost the same innards as a $100 Fluke model that measures a similar 76 degrees to so 392 how, how Fahrenheit. How hot am I, Patrick? Huh? 89.0. Is that, is that But hot? your face? Ooh, 87 on the cheeks. The cheeks are cooling off. Oh, the cheeks are warming up. You're making me blush. <laughs> but it's actually, it'll do up to like 900 degrees, so it's good for measuring headers. Actually, I've used them a bunch for measuring... 88.6. Um, You're hot Heat head. sinks on power supplies. Measure the lights. It'll go like super high. Uh, and this is exactly Whoa, what happens. If you want to go up to like 1400 degrees, you got to spend a lot more. Um, but like you start out checking a heat sink temperature, you hand it to somebody, and they do the same thing you did, which is take temperatures of everything around them. You're like the fourth person that's done this. 144, wow, that, that light is hot. <laughs> TV. Digital calipers. Um, if you're tired of squinting to figure out how long something is or a part you're measuring, <laughs> she's measuring more. Um, it's amazing, these can be found for as little as like 12, 15 bucks on sale online, but they're essentially vernier calipers. And so we've got thousands of an inch here, or in this case, I guess hundreds of an inch. And if I switch the mode, it'll actually do fractionals and it will do millimeters, which I think is freaking awesome because I grew up with the little tiny vernier calipers that are a nightmare to read and I don't have much more luck with dial calipers. And I love the fact that digital calipers are super cheap now and you zero them in just like that and you can start measuring again. The inside of your ear is 90 degrees. Really? Mm -hmm. What about this here? 90.4. Interesting. What if I have a fever again? And finally, because Roger and I were in Fry's, and so on my street, the muni buses mm -hmm. uh, regularly do twice the legal speed limit. So I have this dream of videotaping the muni bus going by. Um, I'm hot and fast. <laughs> actually, just wave your hand towards it. Uh. <laughs> Hold on, let me try it again. Try it now. I hit like a girl. Uh. <laughs> you gotta go like directly towards uh. it. Oh, 14 miles an hour. Woo! 22 miles an hour. Oh, 21 miles an hour. Hold on. Mm. Got to do it like right towards the lens. Mm. 25 miles make, an hour. <laughs> I have to make a noise every time. <laughs> this is Bushnell's Velocity Speed Gun. It's 85 bucks. Um, it's not quite as addictive as a laser thermometer, but you get really, really horrified stares when you're walking down a street, or at least here in San Francisco. Well, like, yeah. And uh, Bushnell says it'll measure a ball moving 10 to 110 miles per hour from 90 feet and a car moving from 10 to 200 miles per hour uh, from 1,500 feet, and it's accurate to plus or minus one pile, mile per hour. To... Sorry. So there's only one tricky part. Um, you have to, quote, keep your target's direction of travel in a direct line with you and not perpendicular to you, which is a vague way of bringing up the cosine effect, which for Doppler radar, um, if the target is in direct line, a collision course with the front of the gun, yeah. The measured speed will be exact, and the farther off angle you get, the accuracy goes down. So basically, okay, to get an exact speed number, you have to get run over. I'm left-handed. Like, I, I should have done it with my left hand. Tennis elbow? Yeah, ready? Tennis shoulder? <clears throat> 29 Woo! miles per hour, ladies and gentlemen. And it'll do a constant readout. So if you like ran back and forth, it would give us the measurement. If you're moving <laughs> Don't about 10 miles me. an hour. Don't tempt me. Do it, do it, no, do it. No, that's all right. Maybe later. <laughs>